Hey, welcome back. In this video, we are drawing the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram for this simply supported beam with a constant distributed load the whole way across. So the first thing that we need to do is draw the free body diagram and then calculate for the reactions. So we find that AY is equal to 30 kilonewtons and BY is also equal to 30 kilonewtons. So let's go ahead and we'll set up our shear force diagram here. That's a positive and minus and this is in kilonewtons. So the way that we will solve this is we will take a virtual section through any point between A and B and draw the free body diagram for it. And then we want to solve for the sum of forces in the y direction to eventually create an expression for V in terms of X. So we get sum of forces in the y is going to be, well we have 30 kilonewtons uh, going upwards and then we have uh, V acting downwards and we have this distributed force, so 10 kilonewtons per meter times x in meters for however far along we're placing our virtual cut. Then we'll get this expression for v, which is equal to 30 uh, minus 10x. So we can just make a table with a couple selected x values, and uh, it'll spit out our v values. And then we can just go and plot those on the shear force diagram. Now you can just do a quick mental check to see if this makes sense. Uh, imagine we had shrunk down x to be 0. Well, we would have basically no distributed force. And then right just on the, if we took a cut just to the right of this support, we'd have 30 kilonewtons pushing up, and we'd have to have that 30 kilonewton internal shear force pressing back down to cancel that out. And that would be in the positive sense. And so we're starting at 30. You can do exactly the same thing if you came from the other side, if you looked at it. If you tended x to be equal to zero, we you know we have that 30 kilonewtons pushing up here, and then we'd have that 30, we'd need 30 kilonewtons pressing down, and that would be opposite this positive sign convention, so we're ending at minus 30, so that looks like we've done that correctly. All right, so now we want to set up our bending moment diagram, and we'll need to redo this free body diagram, including the internal moments, so that we can create an expression for the sum of moments about a point. Let's pick point A here, and uh, we'll get... If we look at this, in the, if the counterclockwise is the positive sense, we have M, and that's going to be equal to uh, the other two guys will be pushing, uh, pushing in the negative direction, so we'll bring them to the other side of the equation. So we have the shear force times X, which is the distance of our cut, and then plus the, the distributed load. So we have 10 kilonewtons per meter. Uh, times x, so this is the magnitude of the force, that is the force, and then the distance to its the centroid of this shape, which gives us the distance that we use in the moment equation, uh, is going to be uh, times x over 2. So that's the distance there. Alright, and then we can just simplify this to get an expression for the internal moment in terms of x, so then we'll have the shear force times uh, times x uh, plus what is this five divided by two, or ten divided by two is five times x squared. Now it's important to notice that v here is also uh, is, v also depends on x, but we already have this table here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to extend this table. Maybe we'll come down a bit and uh, let's let's add in a column for for moments basically. So we'll just drop in an extra column. Uh, and we'll exclude that for the for m, which is our internal moment. So if you just run this calculation, you get these values. And you'll notice that they're all positive, so we can just plot them on the bending moment diagram like this. And there we go, we have the whole bending moment diagram, and we can actually plot any point along here, And uh, but this is pretty good. It shows that we're getting this parabolic curve, which is actually what we expect when we have a, a, a constant distributed load like this. So constant distributed loads will give us a shear force diagram with a triangular shape, and then we see your bending moment diagram always with that parabolic shape for linear or for constant distributed loads. Now there is a faster way to do this. I'm going to quickly show you. Um, instead of uh, instead of doing all these calculations and being able to solve for any point along the bending moment diagram, uh, the shortcut here is if we just quickly label this for BMD. Um, we talked about in the last video about the bending moment diagram that the change in magnitude or the change in yeah in magnitude in the bending moment diagram is just the area of the shear force diagram. So if we take the area of this triangle shape here, this guy, 
Uh, it is one half base times height, and uh, so it's it goes halfway across the span. So the base is three meters. The height is 30 and 1 half, so 1 half times 30 times 3 gives us uh, 45, right? So we have 1 half base height is equal to 1 half times 3 times 30, right? So, so 90 divided by 2, that's 45. So that gives us an increase in, uh, let's do this in black, I don't know if we can do it in blue. Uh, this gives us an increase in 45 units, so because it's on the positive side. And when you see a triangular shape here, we just uh, we convert that into a parabolic shape. So we know that the peak here will be at uh, at 45, and then so that was 45, and then for the for this area here, this is a negative area, but it has the same properties. So it is uh, one half base height, one half base height. Uh, so we'll have one half times three times negative 30. And that gives us negative uh, 45. So basically, this just drops us back down 45 units, and uh, in a parabolic shape, and brings us back down to zero. That's not a very nice parabola, but you get the point. Um, so that's uh, that's way quicker. Just take the areas of this, and you get the shape. And you only get the you don't get every point, but you get the critical points here. In this case, which is the uh, the maximum. And the other point to mention on that actually is if you um, if you kind of connect these with a straight line you'll notice that uh, where the shear force diagram crosses the axes, so when it's zero, you actually get a local maximum or minimum on the bending moment diagram. And so that is the, uh, in this case, it is the maximum. And uh, that's something to watch out for as well. All right, so I hope that shortcut helps you guys. So if you're asked to find certain values, you know how to. If you're just asked to find like the shape of the bending moment diagram and the maximum, then boom, you know how to do that really quick now too. Alright, see you guys in the next video.